In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To our students in the classrooms and to those gathered here this morning, we continue our Lenten observances, a hopeful and, uh, and trusting in God's love and mercy in our lives. Let us now call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, who came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, who come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that, schooled through Lenten observance and nourished by your word through holy restraint, we may be devoted to you with all our heart and be ever united in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people and said, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Therefore, I teach you the statutes and decrees as the Lord my God has commanded me that you may observe them in the land you are entering to occupy. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of the wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. Or what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? However, take care and be earnestly on your guard not to forget the things which, you, which your own eyes have seen or let them slip from your memory as long as you live, but to teach them to your children and to your children's children. Word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gate he has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He sends forth his commands to the earth. Swiftly run his word. He spreads snow like wool. Frost he strews like ashes. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Your word, Lord, our spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you. Until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. When it comes to things that Native Americans taught and said and did and how they lived, all of that kind of stuff is complicated in the sense that did they really do that or is that what the Europeans said that they did or is that what one tribe did but all the rest of them would have said that's ridiculous, all that kind of stuff makes it very complicated to say this Native American saying. All of that being said, one of the things I recall from uh, my years in school was a, uh, a discussion about how it is that we learn what to do. And the teacher explained how um, Native Americans Here's the, the point. Native Americans would allow their children, instead of telling them, the fire is hot, don't touch the fire, they would allow them to, hopefully not badly, but they would allow them to burn themselves to a degree, thus teaching them, you don't touch the fire. We have a need to, to have... Uh, an understanding about what is good and what is bad, that fire is very important, but we also don't play with fire. Students, don't play with fire. All that comes together in that, how is it that we teach these, uh, un these understandings? What is it that we do to hand down our understanding of what is good and what is bad and how to do good and avoid doing bad. Moses, in today's first reading, he is directing the people to remember the law that has been given to him and that he has given uh, to the Jewish people, the Hebrew people. And he is exhorting them, he is, he is asking them to be very diligent about keeping the law. Christ comes and he brings something very new. He does a new thing in that he is new. The Jews could not imagine how God could become a, and come amongst them. The Jews could not imagine that God had a son. All of this was unknown to them. It was something very foreign to them. And yet he has come amongst the people to show them something new but he is also very adamant in today's gospel that what is old is not to pass away either. The, the smallest letter, the smallest part of a letter shall be upheld and ultimately fulfilled by Jesus. There's different ways to go about interacting with this reality. Some can go too far on one extreme. Some can go too far on the other extreme. And somewhere in the middle, I firmly believe, is not only the truth, but what the 
Catholic Church has been given through the truth. One could say that we have to look at each one of those minor laws of Moses and uphold it to the nth degree. If that were the case, we wouldn't be eating pork or using pepper or any other number of realities. That's on one extreme. On the other extreme is we just throw our hands up and say, forget about it. None of that matters. We just have to love Jesus. Somewhere in between is the recognition that the law of Moses is very important. It does play an important part in our lives. The key, I believe, is that the law of Christ is not meant to limit our freedom. That Christ himself is not here, has not come amongst us, has not remained amongst us to limit our freedom. Meaning that Christ really has come to show us what is good for us. To show us who we truly are and who we are called to be. Sometimes God allows us to get burnt a little bit, like that Native American saying, to learn that the fire is bad. But it's all about helping us to learn what is good and what is for our good. Let us look to Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of the law, as coming to show us how it is that that law pointed the way to how to live. And to do our best, especially in this Lenten season, to look to our own lives and our own hearts and ask ourselves, how is it that I might do better to live the life that Jesus Christ has taught me to live, to be an example for others to follow, to be an example of true freedom, freedom within the law, freedom for what is for our good. Let us follow Christ today as we do every day towards our good and ultimate goal, which is unity with him and with the Father for all eternity. Trusting in the mercy of our loving God, let us bring to him our petitions this morning, calling out, loving God, have mercy. For the church, may God continue to bless and sanctify her for the good of the world. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, have mercy. For our elected leaders, for President Biden, Governor Bashir, and Mayor Fisher, May the Lord help them in rejecting all forms of division and prejudice. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those who suffer because of injustice, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, have mercy. For our parish community, may God's law take root in our hearts and make of us a bountiful harvest. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, have mercy. For all who have died, especially for Tim Ford, for whom this holy mass is offered, may they soon come to find their resting place in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, have mercy. Lord God, source of all wisdom, hear the prayers we bring before you for the salvation of the world. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the prayers of your people, along with these sacrificial offerings, and defend those who celebrate your mysteries from every kind of danger, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, Adver adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give, thank, give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth and without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, almighty Father, we bless, through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom, for our sake, you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. 
when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper. He himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. in a similar way on that same evening. He took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And we eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything, that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another some sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the heavenly banquet at which we have been fed sanctify us, O Lord, and cleansing us of all errors, make us worthy of your promises from on high. Through Christ our Lord. It's good to be with you all this day. Uh, special prayers and uh, thanksgiving for our students and teachers uh, in our school. A reminder that the book study for Lent will begin this today at 6 p.m. here in church, the return of the prodigal son. Uh, so all are invited to that, including our students, if any of you all are interested as well. It is good to be with you. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Give to your people, our God, a resolve that is pleasing to you, or by confirming them to your teaching, you bestow on them every favor. Through Christ our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Yeah. Uh -huh.